Let me give you a list of these seven. I'll pick them one by one and begin to explain. Cardinal truth about grace. So let's quickly look at the first one. The first one, Jesus Christ is the embodiment. Jesus Christ is the repertoire. Jesus Christ is the reservoir and is the supplier of grace. So one fundamental cocoa information you need to understand about grace is that Jesus Christ himself is the embodiment of grace. Number two, ladies and gentlemen, salvation is by his grace. You see, it is not your attendance of church services that saves you. No. The Bible says it's not by works of righteousness which we have done. So it is not by church attendance. It is not even what you are doing that brings salvation to you. You see, salvation is entirely by grace. Ephesians chapter 2. In the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to verse 9. For by grace are ye saved through faith. For by grace are ye saved. By what are we saved? It's by grace. So let me look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you are a child of God. By grace. It's by grace. It's not by inheritance. It's not that my father is a pastor, automatically I'm saved. No, sir. It is not by commitment in the church programs and activities. No, ma. It is just by grace we are saved. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Another thing you find out about grace in this very particular subsection is that this grace, I told you, is beyond English grammar. It is a gift of God. And that gift can be freely given to anybody. That is why I call it a bestowal of blessing. So God can bestow that blessing upon somebody. Lift up your eyes and say, my father, my maker, I receive grace today to break off from sin. Say, I receive grace today to accept Jesus into my life. Say, Amen. So, number two, we are saved by what? By grace. We are saved by grace. Then number three, we are justified by his grace to be justified means to appear as if you have not committed any sin to be justified means to be righteous and we are justified by grace i hear people say everybody is a sinner nobody is righteous keep quiet if you don't understand the bible a sinner cannot be a righteous person and a righteous person cannot be a sinner if you are born again, hear me very clearly, you have been qualified by grace to be righteous. And then you are going to see that that righteousness we are talking about is not your own righteousness. It is the righteousness in Christ Jesus. Why? Because it's an embodiment of what? Grace. If Christ was righteous on planet Earth as human, you can be righteous too. Because when you have received him into your life, he comes and cleanses everything inside of your spirit and then put upon you his own righteousness. So that the next time God looks at you, he's no longer seeing that sinner. He's seeing a righteous vessel. Made righteous by what? By gra it's grace that qualified you. Hallelujah. So look at this scripture. Check out this scripture in the book of Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Romans chapter 3, verse 24. Being justified freely by his word, grace being justified and i've told that to be justified means to appear as if you have not sinned so it is not as though you will not confess your sin if you go wrong if you sin against god but when you give your life to jesus christ you are a child of god you cannot continue in that sin you are a child of god heaven record 
comes with you as a righteous person. The Father in heaven sees you as a righteous person. Jesus Christ sees you as a righteous person. So why do you condemn yourself always to that corner of I'm a sinner? Hello, my Lord, I said you didn't give your life to Jesus. If you are a child of God, you are not a sinner. Because the righteousness you are putting on now is the righteousness of who? Christ. Look at this version, BBE, basic edition. Here it in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 24. And they may have righteousness put to their credit freely by his grace through the salvation which is in Christ Jesus. Now, this makes it clearer. He said, This righteousness is put into your credit. Now, let me give you this as an illustration. Maybe standing, you didn't have any money in your account, not even one naira. And somebody walked up to you and introduced you to another fellow standing and said, You see, this fellow, he lavishes money to whoever wants it. And he gives everybody 100 million naira if you're interested. Are you interested? I immediately say, Ah, if I'm not interested under this administration, that things are so hard, then why am I alive? I need this 100 million naira. And he said, You're not going to do anything, you are not working, you are not laboring, you are not doing anything, but he will give it to you. And you are looking at it as if, Are you serious? And then the person that they have introduced you to that have this money, this multi billion trillionaire just look at you and say let me have your account detail please and then you give your account detail and before you know it, you see green alert like our mommy testified 100 million naira in your account you clean your eyes very very well ah, am i dreaming is it correct and then for you to be very very sure you look at the person next to you say please what's your account detail you from that money you transfer five thousand and the thing went say, ah, this is real low. 100 million all of a sudden are you still a pauper a poor person or a millionaire so the next time you walk up to somebody having gotten one million naira in your account and someone is asking you are you a poor person or you're a millionaire what will you answer that is how grace is when jesus christ comes into your life from his own righteousness that is full he deposit righteousness in your life he clothed you with righteousness so that from that moment if you are in the midst of those smokers and drunkards and alcoholics and old gamblers all those ungodly people and they are saying all of us are the same saying no, i am not like you because i have received what grace and that makes me a righteous person somebody shout hallelujah somebody say grace so we are justified by what by grace number four i have just told the cardinal truth about grace grace is not for selected few so somebody will not say eh, well i know you you are born again because god gave you grace no you yourself also can receive that grace so let me smack your neighbor and say neighbor receive that grace this morning say neighbor if i am a child of god you also you are a child of god if you receive that grace today say amen to that grace is not for selected few how do i know please follow me to the book of titus chapter 2 titus chapter 2 and in verse 11 hear this for the grace of god that bringeth salvation has appeared to only pastors is that correct has appeared to only workers in the church is that correct okay has appeared to only those in nigeria is that correct as appeared to all men is that correct then shout hallelujah that means that this grace is not for selected few as many whoever want it the bible says in john chapter 1 from verse 11 he said as many as have received him to them gave you what power and i submit to you that power is the grace you are talking about because grace is divine enablement to them give you power to become the sons of god what makes you a child of god is grace for by grace are you what saved it's grace 
So if you are not saved, it is not the fault of God. If you are not saved, it is not the fault of the preacher. It's not that the preacher didn't preach very well. It's not that the preacher didn't say what he ought to say. It's not that the preacher didn't read relevant scriptures to you. It is just simply because grace has appeared to you and you refuse to acknowledge it. Grace has come before and you receive, you refuse to accept it. Somebody say, my father, my maker. I receive grace. Say amen to that. Amen. Hallelujah. Grace. So grace is for everybody. Grace has appeared to everybody. The difference would just be that have you accepted it or not? If you accept it, then you can then begin to enjoy those manifestations of grace at those three levels. You have it at salvation level. You have it as consecration that leads to sanctification level. Then you have it in the baptism of the Holy Ghost. If you are baptized in the Holy Ghost, you have obtained grace. All right. So that is what grace is a fundamental to the number five.